Welcome back, humor consumers, to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm comedian Tracy DeGraff. And I'm Catherine, co-host and bestie. Welcome to the pod lab, bestie. Thank you. Yeah, it's a wonderful day. It's beautiful. It's hot out. Well, yeah, it is hot. It it's is. It's not too bad, but not yeah. like it had been. True that. It's the middle of August and kids are going back to school. So this is the time for heat in the Chicago area. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, today, friends, we are hitting you up with episode number 186. And I think it's going to be a great episode. Yeah. We are going to be covering I Am Celine Dion. It's a documentary that is available now on Amazon Prime. And we're, we just decided to do it at the last minute <laughs> because of time, which is always our, our big vice, right? Mm-hmm. But let me give you like the takeaways that you'll get out of listening to this episode if you choose to listen all the way through to the end, which is usually about 45 minutes. Number one, we're going to give you an overview of the documentary as well as stiff person's syndrome, which is the disorder that Celine Dion has. Yeah. We're, number two, we're going to give you other examples of people who lost their gift because this disease sadly caused Celine to lose her vocal cords for a period of time. Now, she was just back at the Olympics singing, which was beautiful. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. She I did she, see that. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about other examples of people who lost their gift and how it impacted them. You know, and, and and just, you know, what God did. And then number three, we're going to share our firsthand experiences of losing a gift, losing something precious like that. As always, we have scripture to share with you at the end, as well as a call to action. But before we get to that, Catherine, tell our listeners about our sponsorship program. Our program involves you listeners giving us... <laughs> Five dollars a month. Yeah. yeah just, five dollars a month. Five. It's automatic. You could go to Podbean or uh, Patreon. I always say that. Well, I hate because that they both they, start with P they begin and they're with both P. green. Send them to my website. The website my website will be yeah. the place that would be better that's to send them. True. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Tracy DeGraff dot com. That's right. And this helps us move along. We have a platform that we pay for and the the this offsets at cost. And plus new equipment, and it just helps move the ministry along. Life it, happens life anyway. It certainly does, and you can support our mission. And you'll see there, if you go to the website, there's a little button that says podcast. Just click there. You can give $5 a month, or you can just give a one-time gift, whatever is best and easiest for you. So yeah. we appreciate all the support. All right, let's dive into this episode. If you are one who has never seen this documentary, by the way, full disclosure, there's going to be spoiler alerts because that's how how are we going to talk about it unless we talk about it. Yeah. If you are one who has never seen this, give them an overview. What is the documentary about? It's a short period of time in her journey with this disease, this stiff person syndrome. And it starts out where she's, she's already in it. It's not the beginning or anything like that, because actually we learn that she has had had it for 17 years when she first started experiencing some strange things going on with herself. Yeah. And then she admits later in the documentary that she had been, she was tired of lying to the audience because she had to cancel shows. And didn't you really feel that she was absolutely 100% sincere about how painful it was to cancel shows that, 100% 100% yes. I was crying yeah. within the first 15 minutes of this documentary. Tears were in my eyes yeah. because of the heartache of what it what it was that she was going through. It was so incredibly difficult. Right. And she had said that it's not hard to do a show, but it's hard to cancel it. Yeah. And and so there was a she she even admitted that she had cheated a couple times whenever her voice wouldn't work she would stick the microphone out and ask the audience to sing or sometimes she would tap the microphone like there was something wrong with it so she was kind of hiding these these uh disruptions that were happening and and for a while she didn't know for sure what it was i read something that said she was she was thinking it was or she was told that it was like a ear infection type thing. Yeah. And but anyway, she did have to face the music, as they say, and tell people. So in 2022, she did a, a FaceTime or rather Facebook 
social media interview and put it out there what was going on with her. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't imagine the pressure when you're international superstar, yeah. mega star. Mm-hmm. And these tours were sold out all around the world. Yeah. And the money involved in that, for one thing, and the amount of people, not only the ticket holders who are her beloved fans that want to come and see her, but promoters and yeah. auditoriums or whatever they're called, stadiums and such, you know, you're affecting a lot of people's livelihood. Yes. Not just right. hers. And she seemed very aware of that. Yeah. And and therefore, that's a, another reason why it was so hard to cancel. Her doctors had said, you cannot another show, you know, yeah. when she was on tour and pretty much forbade her from doing, you know, anymore. And so, yeah, it definitely affects it's a domino effect. It affects many, many people. Yeah. So not it, something that is a decision that has come too lightly at right. all. Right. Right. And you could certainly see the emotion. She was crying in the documentary just, you know, over the whole thing and the sadness of it. And those tears really got me, you know, yeah. to see someone who seemingly has it all. She's at the mm-hmm. pinnacle of her career. She's, you know, I, I would venture to say that she's one of the greatest singers of all time. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, certainly sold a lot of records and all of that. And then she has this horrible debilitating syndrome yep. that is extremely rare. It's only like one in a million. Yeah. That's extremely yeah. rare. It That is rare. In fact, I was thinking if I was naming this special, I would have called it one in a million because she's kind of like that. You know, she's yeah. one, of a, one in a million. Yeah. And she had said that singing is everything. She had been doing yeah. it since she was a little girl. She came from a family of like 14 or something Huge family. Like that, right. And that was all she knew. And the stage was like a second home to her. And you could tell she's not only an artist, a singer, she is absolutely a performer. Yeah, she knows. She's extremely passionate. She knows how to entertain an audience. And her parents met through music, and they were both musical. And so it was just around her her whole entire life. And she mentioned something during that period where she was describing her tours and such. Mm -hmm. And she was saying to her sons something like, I've been around the world multiple times, but I haven't seen any of it. Yeah. And she said, if you can believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the price you pay for show business. Yep. You know, right. I I thought another interesting thing that she said, I wrote down some quotes. Yeah, I I did too. Yeah. She said, my voice was the conductor of my life. Yeah. And I wrote that down because that mindset that she had, and then when she could no longer do it, how, how devastating that would be, you know? Yeah. Because if that's, if that's the conductor of your life, and then that's, cut off or paralyzing you then had to be a huge blow yeah exactly you know at the very beginning when they showed some earlier footage of young celine Mm -hmm. when she first walked out on that stage and she was looking around and she seemed a little bit shy and there was a shot to her where she started to laugh when she talked about her dream she said that her dream was to be an international star and to sing for all of her life yeah she laughed like, hee hee, like, wouldn't it be funny if that happened? You know, so this truly was from a very young age, her big dream. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could just you could just feel the the passion as you watch the documentary or any of the other. I, I watched some other interviews and, and things and they showed some clips of her and. You could just feel it through the electronic device, you know? Yeah. I thought the vulnerability of Celine Dion was on display. Yeah. She was without makeup Mm -hmm. for a big portion of this documentary. I mean, they show her on stage in her full, you know, regalia, whatever you call it, Mm -hmm. her get up. But she was without makeup and she was just doing her daily routine and just explaining what this disease does to people. Yeah. And they showed her having a, like an episode. It was a seizure, but it was when she was in full blown, stiff person, spasm seizure. And, and she's, she's sobbing and it's really hard to watch. And, 
what they said triggered it was literally her brain was excited. She had just finished singing and it was too much uh, stimulation. And so then they gave her some some Valium and something through her nose. I don't even know what that was, but I know the Valium will just cut. Ca- ca- Did I ever tell you that when I was 14, 14 years old, we were camping and I woke up what one morning, my entire left side was paralyzed. You did tell me that. Yeah. And I don't, I don't remember what it was called, but I do remember at the hospital, they just really drilled me about, do I do drugs? You know, and I absolutely did not do drugs, you know. Then. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Catherine. And, and was I pregnant? You oh, know, and my. I was just at like, 40? God. I mean, that was way beyond anything I could imagine at that, you know, at that time. And anyway, but they had to give me Valium for my body to just. Yeah, it's a muscle relaxer. Yeah, because I was completely stiffened up my entire left side from my like jaw down to my toes. And I I still don't know what that was. The body is so amazing in the way that it works, you know. Yeah. A couple of the things that I wrote down about the documentary about her, what she said, one of the quotes that I wrote down was she said, I think we did create our own magic when she was talking about her stage show, mm. that it was their own magic. Yeah. And she also said, if you want to go fast, go alone. Yes. If you want to go far, go together. Go together. I wrote that too. Yeah. And I thought about that in terms of this journey for her. It seemed so incredibly sad to me when they showed her in her home. Mm-hmm. With her sons, her tw- her twin sons who are younger, I, the older son wasn't there, but, and then just like the butler and she has her own physical therapy, sports physical therapist there, mm-hmm. as well as a nurse yeah, to help her, right? Right. Because her husband had passed away. Yes. Her husband was like 20 some years older than her. I so he was, he was quite a bit older. Okay. Yeah. He was her manager. Oh. And he started managing her when she was in her teens. She was like a early teenager and he was like almost 40. So, <laughs> so scandalous. Well, they fell in love and, yeah. and they had an amazing love story, but he passed away sadly of throat cancer actually. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I did. Sad. I wondered. Mhm. Hmm. Uh, that's a whole different documentary that I watched a long while ago, but I was looking it up again cuz Ron was like, "Oh, is that is that her dad?" I'm like, "No, mm-hmm. that's her husband." Yeah. But they had an amazing love story. So th- so they had their life together and sadly he passed and so I he was in the picture when she had this terrible disorder that bubbled up, right? When she had like the symptoms and everything, but perhaps they didn't have the accurate diagnosis or it wasn't in, into the point where it was making her cancel things. Yeah. So I didn't quite catch that. If I missed it, I might've been, you know, not t- totally engaged with the, whatever they were saying. Mm-hmm. But anyway, all that to say, let's talk a little bit more about stiff person's syndrome. Mm-hmm. What, what did you learn about it? Well, I got my information from John Hopkins John Hopkins Health, something Mm -hmm. or the other. And it says, stiff person syndrome is a rare autoimmune neurological disorder that most commonly causes muscle stiffness and painful spasms that come and go and can worsen over time. However, some people experience other symptoms such as an unsteady gait, double vision, slurred speech, I would think then that that's like a stroke, you know? I mean, that's neurological too, though. It's terrifying. It is. Any of it. Okay. (laughs) When I read through all of this, because this is really long, the one I pulled up. You're like, I'm dying. I have this. Also, Tracy might trigger me (laughs) because one of the things they think is a trigger (laughs) is being suddenly scared. Okay. And also stress. Okay. But you're suddenly scared on a regular basis. You're, you're, pe- you're whatever it is, scare factor. You're- Guess what? What? That's part of it. So like, if you're, <laughs> if you're like a little anxious and then you're scared, you're yeah, e- that easily can- scared. Also, I have to tell Kenny, we're going to have to move somewhere warm because being cold also like trigger it. So yeah. Okay. Question. Mm. And I know this has happened to you and probably to our listeners. Have you ever gotten a horrible Charlie horse that wakes you up? Yes, I knew this was going to come up. Yes, I have. 
I, because- I don't know what this stiff person's syndrome feels like when you have it going on, right? Mm-hmm. But I know what a Charlie horse feels like, and it feels like death. Well, here's why. It literally cripples you, and yeah. your feet and toes curl up in such ways that you never thought right. you can't possibly. I could never curl my toes naturally the way they do with a Charlie horse, <laughs> or even like every now and then my mom's hands cramp up yeah. and stiff, and then I think I don't know if she's dehydrated or right. or what's going on. But sometimes my toes will get a get a cramp in them, and they'll just go like yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> separate. And my toes are long. I have like finger toes. You do. <laughs> they look like French fries. I- I have actually gotten cramps in my toes, and I'll take a picture of it and send it to Catherine. <laughs> like, look at what's going on over here. <laughs> I'm sometimes not sure if it's a hand or a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make fun of me. No. We well, you make fun hands. of you. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. I, I say all that yeah. just to bring a little point of reference. I'm not laughing at anybody's no, pain at all. No, of course not. But I'm just saying that muscles, yeah. and when they cramp up and stiffen up and whatever that hurts it does hurt when i was pregnant with my caleb my baby which was actually my sixth pregnancy because i lost my fifth baby but my sixth pregnancy so my muscles that would hold up the baby Mm -hmm. like you know my abdominal muscles Mm -hmm. i would get these stabbing pains every single night in the middle of the night, it would wake me up because I would be laying down and in a certain position, Mm. the stabbing would start. And it brought me to tears. Mm -hmm. It hurt so bad. In fact, that is why I forced my husband to have a vasectomy while I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. Because I said to him, there is absolutely no way I can get pregnant again. This is the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. These muscles, they're they're on strike. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're like, we're out. We refuse to work. Yeah, well, when your muscle cramps up like that, I mean, it, yes, it is very painful. It's yeah, it's it is paralyzing. And they showed that they showed Celine having a seizure or spasm, spasming, however mm-hmm. you say it. They showed her having that, and she could barely talk. She could just utter, and they were having her communicate through squeezing the hand. You know, once she could after. Yeah. And I watched other videos of other patients or, you know, people that have this syndrome. Same thing. I mean, they just get super stiff and it just looks like they're in so much pain. And my heart just breaks for people in pain and suffering. And it happens more often in women than it does in men. And in fact, it used to be called stiff man syndrome. Really? But they changed the name of it, especially because it it does occur in women more than men. Usually, most commonly develops in people ages 40 to 50. But in rare cases, it it can occur in children and older adults as well. Do you know how old Celine Dion is right now? I'm going to say 57. She's 56. Oh, okay. Yeah, 56. Ron looked it up. He And really, I mean, it's so it's sobering when you hear someone who's your age or younger, because I'm 58 and Ron is 58. Mm-hmm. And when you hear somebody that has something like this, that's a life-changing disease. That's totally. It's just like, oh, no. And she, so in 2022, when they did the documentary, she had said she had the symptoms 17 years prior to that. Yeah. So whatever the math is on that. I did but, read that it's highly difficult to diagnose because there's so few yes. doctors that have ever even seen it because it's so rare. So people will say, oh, you have this, you have that, and it's all wrong. Yeah. And her symptoms were, she said she went for breakfast. And after breakfast, her voice got a little high. I think it's really interesting how how artists, singers know how to take care of their voice yeah. and they know the pitch they should have at all times and they, they, they know they need to rest, not smoke, you know, all the stuff. Right. And she said that her voice got high and it was cracking and then it would happen during performances sometimes, as we said. And then yeah. she would just try to, you know, fake her way through it or get past it and all of that so yes she did perform she wasn't able to perform for a couple of years and then she did she did some kind of movie i think but she had a very hard time recording the song getting through it Mm. so she wasn't able to 
like, you know, you know how they do the premieres before something is released. Yeah. She couldn't do any of that. But and now I don't remember. I didn't write down the name of the. Of yeah, the I don't remember the name of it either. I but like I it was a superhero thing. Or yeah, I think Deadpool it, or something. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah. Well, anyway, but I didn't know that she performed at the closing of the opening of the Olympics. Yeah. And I didn't hear about it because all I heard about was that mockery of the <laughs> supposed the mockery supper. of the Last Supper. That's all I knew. And I love watching the Olympics and the opening and the closing. I, we just didn't this year. I don't know why. Yeah. But I did watch it, though. Wow. Oh, she hit it out of the park. I don't even know how she did it because this disease is crippling. But And you can never be cured of this. Medicines and therapy can help. And it can, you know, stave it off for a short amount of time, but not for long. Yeah. That happened to her during something. In the documentary, you see that she had had her medicine and she performed whatever she did, but then the medicine was wearing off and she couldn't go on. Yeah. And it also affects stiff person syndrome affects your walk, your gait, yep. your balance. Mm -hmm. So the muscles in your throat, obviously, which affect your vocal cords. Yeah. It can even affect your breathing. Right. Because it makes it difficult to breathe. I mean, the heart is a muscle. Right. So it, it's just I'm so sorry to anybody that has to go through this kind of suffering. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Anything else about Celine Dion or stiff person syndrome? No, but if if one is interested in learning more about stiff person syndrome, I would get on the John Hopkins medicine. I compared it to other mm -hmm. websites. And this one is quite lengthy. And it's, although it might scare you like it did me, <laughs> but it's very informative. Yeah. Sometimes the more you know, the more you know, and then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move on. Okay. All right. Let's talk about other people who have lost their gift and how it impacted them. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what happens when you lose control over something that was, you know, such a gift in your life. In, in Celine Dion's case, her voice was her gift. Yeah. And she lost it. Yeah. And it impacted her greatly. Yeah. So give us an example of someone that you researched that lost their gift and how did it affect them? Well, one person I was thinking of who was already a celebrity and then had a diagnosis, I was trying to stay on, on that track, was Michael J. Fox. Sure. And everybody knows who he was first with his show. Was it Growing, Growing Pains? Growing Pains, yes. Yeah. Love that show. There were, there were three that were very similar, and I sometimes get them mixed up. But he was in Growing Pains, and but he's... I think more known for Back to the Future. And when he was 29, I believe it was, let me look here. He was diagnosed with, yes, he was 29 years old in 1991 when he was diagnosed with Parkinson's wow. disease. That is so young. Yes. And how it affected him. At first, he fell into depression and alcoholism. Yeah. Which I didn't, I didn't know that. And I've seen interviews on him, but perhaps I knew and then just, you know, yeah. forgot about that. But now, though, for more than 25 years, he has been raising money. His foundation has raised $233 million to, you know, for research for, for the disease, for Parkinson's. Yeah, that's it's, that would just be incredibly hard to take at 29 years old. Yes. Now you have this diagnosis and it's affected him for like the last 30 years cuz isn't he like 60? How uh, I know he's not that much older than me. Let's see. If he was 25, no, 29. Oh boy, we're doing math everybody. Yeah, he's age 63. He, okay. he was born in 1961. Okay. Yeah, and but today he continues to maintain a spirit of improvement. He yeah. presses on. He, I don't know if he's currently doing some acting, but I have seen him in somewhat recent years doing appearing in, you know, regular shows. And obviously he must be on medication in some of them. But I've seen him in interviews. I've seen him in shows where he is, you know, moving a lot. And it can be distracting in a way, you know, when you watch that, because you can't help but feel for the person. Oh, 100%. And what they're going through. But yeah, so he was one person that I 
I thought of. I, I thought of as well, it was the artist Terry Redlin. Oh, sure. Yeah. And yeah. He, we many people know his his art. There are usually country scenes. He's a very famous artist, but he developed Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. And it you and I went to the museum and saw his artwork, and they have a few that the family allows people to see when his mind started to go. But yeah. there's there's one or two that they hold back and they don't show anyone. And it just it's just really sad to me because he's another person that was a, a celebrity artist and got diagnosed with something that his gift was then yeah. taken. I think it just reminds us that pain is no respecter of persons. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter mm-hmm. who you are, how much you have or how much you don't have. Pain hits everyone at some point. Yeah. And so that's, I think, even more the reason to place Christ as your conductor in your life. Right. You know, to not, to place something that cannot not, be shaken. Yeah. Not your gift. Yeah. And, and these are God-given gifts, but God wants us, as you just pointed out, yeah. he, he is our greatest gift. We and the gift that. is not for our glory. No. Right. The gift is given. Okay. So obviously, Celine Dion was gifted the, a beautiful voice. And then she took her gift and she nurtured it and she worked her butt off. And she, did, you know, she sure did. She paid the price to have the fame and the, the success that she's had. Mm-hmm. But her gift was God given. Her life was God given. Yeah. Michael J. Fox was given a gift of, you know, whatever, being comfortable in front of a camera or being silly or being funny. And, and, his gift was nurtured through acting. And I don't know if he took classes or whatever, or he got different opportunities, but God gave him his gift. Right. God gave him his life. So I want to share with you about a pastor. You probably never heard of him. He's from the 90s. His name was Pastor Dwayne Miller. Okay. He was a Baptist minister. And he woke up one morning and he had a sore throat mm-hmm. and he had to preach two sermons. You know, he had two services at his church and he couldn't do it. He did one. He did the early service and his throat just kept getting worse and worse. And the second one, he just couldn't get through it. So his church said, okay, you know, just go home and heal. And they prayed for him and all that. Well, it turned out he lost his voice. He had a virus that attacked his vocal cords and he lost his voice for three years. Oh, wow. And he had to give up his church because he was a pastor that couldn't preach. And it's know? hard to understand God taking away gift like that to somebody who's serving God. Right. Right. You know, it's hard to it's hard to understand and wrap your brain around that. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent hard. And his wife had to get a full time job with benefits and all of that to support the family during this illness because preaching God's word was the only thing he was trained for. Mm -hmm. You know, he was ordained, seminary trained preacher. Mm -hmm. And he had to get a job doing something else that didn't require any talking. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. obviously. Well, three years pass and he goes from doctor to doctor to doctor to try to get this thing worked out. Nobody has any idea, you know, exactly how to help him. And his old Sunday school class asked him to come back to the church where he's no longer the pastor and preach a sermon and this or, or preach a Sunday school class. Mm-hmm. And they follow a curriculum that's predetermined. Okay. And that particular day's curriculum was on healing. Oh, and oh, wow. And th- he was gifted a special microphone through Garth Brooks. Okay. Garth Brooks somehow heard about his plight in life and how he couldn't oh, talk. Okay. <clears throat> and he sent him this microphone that helps to get it out. Okay. So anyway, here's Pastor Miller, and he's in this Sunday school class, and he's talking about how God is still a God who heals. And halfway through him talking, his voice came back. Oh, my gosh. And, and you, can, wow. you can tell. And I remember when this happened in the 90s. Mm. I remember hearing about it. And he was on Focus on the Family and all of that. <clears throat> and you can tell that he was not faking it. You know, this is not something right, that... Right, because that's where our brain goes, you know. Well, like, yeah. It, does he want to show, you know... Because now we're in the days of AI and you don't know what's real. Yeah, and it's hard to... Right. Well, you can tell that as he's talking, it's just a gradual thing. And then all of a sudden, he can talk. 
Wow. And he was overwhelmed, obviously. Mm. Well, then he went, you know, he got through that message and, and just that it just so happened to be on healing and how God is still yeah. the God of healing. And he is. You'll have to go back and listen to the, because yeah. it was recorded at this Sunday school class because they used to record on cassette tape. Mm-hmm, right. Because this is the old days, people. They would record on cassette tape all the Sunday school classes. That way, if you missed it, you could go to the church and take the cassette home and listen and then bring the cassette back. Anyway, after he was finished with this Sunday experience and he had been healed, he went back to his doctor and he was like, you and even when he called the doctor's office, the receptionist was like, you're not doing Miller, you know, because he had been going there for three years trying to get fixed. Right. I could see where they would and not believe. Yeah. And the guy said, I know you've never heard this voice, but it is me and I need to see my doctor. And she goes, I think he's going to see you. I think he'll see you. (laughs) Yeah. And the doctor cleared his schedule and sat down with him and then looked into his throat. They had videos of the inside of his throat over the three years. Wow. And they could see a lot of scar tissue over the course of three years because that it had all built up because his the way that the virus attacked the vocal cords meant that it left him with something called like subvocal cords or something. Okay. And it was just like an abrasion on those as Ooh. well. So there's scar tissue then that the body puts over that to bring healing to it. Mm. But the scar tissue is scar tissue. It yeah. doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. When they when they went back in to look at his vocal cords, the scar tissue was gone. Oh my gosh. It was wow. a healing. Yeah, it, it, there was no explanation for it. Well, praise the Lord. And the doctor, yeah. the doctor said, "There's absolutely nothing that we can explain here. Mm-hmm. There's no explanation for this." And he even he was a teaching doctor, and so he would even teach his students. You know, there are going to be times when you will see things that will happen that you will not have an explanation for. And he gives this as an example. Mm, yeah, all of that to say, then he came back to preaching and teaching and sharing this story. And he wrote a book about it. And he talks, I think he's still alive today. I I haven't found anything to the contrary. This was as of September of 2023, because, you know, he's getting older, but, but he gives all the glory to God. So why did it happen, Catherine? Yeah, well, now I see his testimony. Why did it happen? Why did this pastor lose his gift for three years? And, And in his mind, It was going to be permanently gone because the doctors were saying there's no way we can fix this. Well, so God can reveal himself so that he can be glorified. He can be magnified in this in this thing that he is the ultimate healer. He is. And he's still he's still doing miracles today. He's still in the miracle business, my friends. Yeah. You know, I thought you were going to say when you first started saying that he was having trouble with his voice, the pastor, Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say ALS, which made me think of Lou Gehrig, Mm -hmm. who also was, I don't know if he was a famous baseball player, but I know. Oh, yeah. I know he was an athlete, but he's another one who developed a disease and persevered nonetheless with his disease. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, let's move on to point three. Our firsthand experiences of losing a gift and how it impacted you. What say you? Well, two people that I'll talk about. One, when Kenny was injured in 2005, that Mm -hmm. changed him for, I mean, he can still do things, but he got hit in the back of the neck. And so he it was a really bad injury. He had surgery and he it was debilitating. He couldn't work for nine months. That's it was a long time. Really tough times for us because I wasn't working, you know, well, not a career. And and so he was unable to do all the things that God does gift him with abilities and, and things like that. So but he had a lot of therapy and the the surgery, you know, had worked. Oh, yeah. Well, it took time, but he healed from that. And he's still able to use his gifts, but not like how he could before. And so the wonderful thing was, is he later got an opportunity to kind of shift his career where he doesn't have to do as much laborious, you know, work. Yeah. So yeah. Now, now he's more at a desk. And he misses, though. Yeah, being out there. He does. Hands on. He does, yeah. Yeah. And then also my mom, because of this disease, this Alzheimer's, 
you know, my mom, my mom actually can sing pretty well. Yeah. I've heard her sing. Yeah. She does have a good, she has a nice voice. Yeah. And then just even just being able to communicate and be a mom and a friend. And so, yeah, that's, so her gifts are taken away too. Yeah. It's painful to watch. Yeah. I was going to share a couple experiences. One was with my husband back when the housing market came to a stop here in the Chicago area. Mm-hmm. The jobs, any jobs that were tied to new housing, yeah. new construction, wow. Yeah. I mean, it was tough. Yeah. And so his income came to a screeching halt. And it was crazy. I remember that. It was crazy for a few years. And we had five kids to feed, Mm -hmm. you know, in the house and to take care of. And I was working too, but I owned my own business at that time. And cash, it just seemed like the cash just dried up like a desert. And no businesses had any, like, free cash or (laughs) working capital to do anything with, you know? Yeah, And so during this couple of years, there were many, many people that owed me money, you know, businesses Mm -hmm. that I was providing a service for with my business, but they weren't able to pay me. Yeah. You know, and eventually they did, but it was painful. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) Does that mean I'm not going to get paid? And then the same thing happened, too, with my husband. Yeah. You know, he would work, but not get Get the paycheck. Right. Because the cash was like all bye bye. And the thing that I look back on now as I think through it, because I remember one time when I had $20 and I had to feed seven people with $20 for the week. Yeah. So today, I'm extremely grateful that we're not in that position anymore Mm -hmm. and that we got through it somehow, you know? Yeah. God provided. He did. In all kinds of ways. He did. Mm-hmm. And in our marriage, I look back at that period of time and that season of time as one of my greatest experiences in marriage because neither one of us turned on the other, right. you know, or or there was no blaming of anybody. Yeah. I mean, it was just the circumstances were what they were. Right. And you clung to each other. We did. And we clung to our faith. And I don't know how people get through difficult times without that. Yeah. You know, then the other thing I would say, which is more recent, would be the pandemic, because when the pandemic came, it just put a big crushing blow onto all my plans that I had as a comedian. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on the cusp of releasing comedy special. I was working with a manager. I had you know, goals and yeah. dreams. And I thought it was all going to happen and it was going to be to God's glory and it was going to be yeah. so great. <laughs> yeah, and it was happening. It just unraveled like a sweater with a big old string somebody was pulling, you know. Mm-hmm. But God is good and he's faithful and he has redefined those dreams and he's given me this podcast. I, I mean, we yeah. we wouldn't have this podcast if it weren't for the pandemic. That's true. Because we started doing this as a result of everything shut down. Right. So I had nowhere to go. Nothing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So praise God. Awesome. All right. Anything else that you wanted to share before I share the scripture and the call to action? Mm, No, that's that's it. All right. Well, pretty good. All right. Well, we have a very hopeful and encouraging scripture for you. Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. Can't emphasize that enough. Yeah. Faithful yeah. in prayer. I mean, we can't, uh, we're, we're not God. Right. How can we understand the mind of God? You know, how right. can we understand why hard things happen? We can't. Right. So we just have to remain joyful in hope that, you know, healing will come. Yeah. On this side of heaven or the other, healing will come and patient in our affliction. And I like to term it like, let's suffer well. Yeah. When we're in a period of suffering and we're all going to experience some suffering. Mm -hmm. You're not getting out of it. Let's suffer well. Let's suffer well like Jesus. Let's have a heart that is pointing to the Father. Mm -hmm. Let's forgive. Let's not be vengeful. You know, let's just do that. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing was our call to action. Give thanks to God for each day's blessing and trust him with the broken pieces. There we go. That's the call to action. Mm -hmm. Find something to be grateful for every single day and trust him with the things that you're just not so great, you know, not so happy about. Yeah, we do that every day, don't we? We do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a wrap. Okay. You've been listening to the Life Happens Laugh Anyway podcast. I'm still comedian Tracy DeGraff. I'm still Catherine. See you next time.